So that's the big picture, and it's ambitious. We want to embed social and economic rights in the Canadian Charter. Um, I told Alan I think we should give ourselves 25 years to get there. <laughs> it's bold and it's audacious, um, but I also feel that it's, it's absolutely imperative. We've made international commitments. A covenant is a promise, but we haven't fulfilled the promise, and so this is work that is worth doing. In order to do this, we needed to begin unpacking what does a human rights approach to poverty mean. And as we began listening and reading and trying to understand what this would mean for our work, we identified four key elements that we felt um, are part of the work. The first is accountability, and Alan spoke about this. Um, in many ways, this refers to the social contract between Canadian citizens and the state. What does the, what does the state owe us? What is the government responsible for delivering to us? They are accountable. They have made these promises. How do we ensure that that is delivered? And I think that there's lots of work that we can do here, and there's work already underway. Many in this room are already doing that. And it may not be with the federal government. It may be with the provincial government. It may also be at the local level. But there is accountability that is tied to rights, and this is an area that we feel really needs to be explored. The second element is measurement. And again, I think many people in this room would agree with this. We have to measure the progress that we're making. One of the, the principles in a human rights approach is progressive realization of rights. It means that because we say there's a right to housing, it doesn't mean that tomorrow, overnight, everyone has housing and it's done. And that's the accountability. It means that we set goals and targets and we progressively realize these rights and we work together to do that. But that takes measurement. It takes data, and I think many people in this room, again, understand and value the need for data and the need to share it. And so I think there's lots of work to be done there. Part of a human rights approach also means access. We can have rights. In fact, the state may provide all kinds of entitlements. But is everyone accessing the rights that are theirs? And how well are the systems working to provide those access points? And that goes to some of Alan's comments around a broken system. Where are the fractures and how can we surgically get in there and make those connections happen so that people are able to access their entitlements and rights. A final principle, and it's certainly not least, I think this is core and central to much of the work that happens around human rights and poverty, but also much of the work that Maitri has always done. And that is a recognition of participation of those with lived experience as being part of the solution and part of the work in shaping those solutions. Not only do large institutions need to think about how they shape policies and include the perspective of people with lived experience, but also our work, many in the civil society, the organizations, the campaigns, the networks, the, the not-for-profits, the charitable organizations, how well do we include those with lived experience in the work that we're doing to shape those answers? As we build out a work plan for Maitri, we've identified three areas that we feel that we bring or can bring value to the work. The first is in building thought leadership on social and economic rights. Alan rightly pointed out we're not, we're not the existing experts or thought leaders, but we feel that we can convene and build that thought leadership and help build that narrative of rights in Canada. This is essential and important work. We can build deeper conversations that will generate those ideas that will help us move this forward to ultimately seeing social and economic rights protected in the Charter. The second area of work that we feel that we can contribute is in advancing rights and movements. Here I think some of the, the, the key principles come into play very clearly. Building accountability, supporting measurement, and enabling access. To do this, we feel we can do a few different things. We feel that we can support movements that are talking about rights and advancing rights. I think there are lots of opportunities also for us to work on system fractures, where the system is not working and how can we bring our ideas, resources and connections to bear to fix those, those fractures. And finally, and I think very importantly around building advancing rights and movements in Canada, is about building a culture of human rights. I'm not sure we have a culture of human rights in Canada today. We talk about them, people know that they're out there, but I don't know that they are actually ingrained in how we think about solutions, in how we think about poverty. And so I think that there's lots of work to be done there, and we've already begun to do some of that. 
finally, the third area that I feel that Maitri can do can contribute to a stronger rights-based approach to poverty is in strengthening leaders in learning. As movement builders and change makers, we need to be effective at building constituencies and being advocates. This requires different forms of leaders. First, it requires leaders who can speak from experience about what it means not to have affordable housing, not to have food on the table, not to be able to go to the dentist or obtain required medication, not to be paid a fair wage, or not to get paid when you have the flu, not to have access to the internet and so be excluded from employment opportunities and even accessing government benefits, not to have access to educational opportunities or experiences, not to have access to justice. We need the voice of experience from that. These are leaders who have that experience of the social and economic rights being violated, and they can provide a much needed voice and perspective in shaping solutions. This is a key pillar of a human rights approach and one we feel we can work on. We also think that it requires leaders of organizations that work on these issues to be effective advocates. As a broad network of civil society, we have a responsibility to engage in shaping public policy that better serves the common good. A key element of this is protecting the social and economic rights that our government has committed to internationally and that reflect our core, core values as a society. This means we have to get better at being partners in shaping policies and systems and affecting institutional change. It also means that we have to do this in a way that puts those who experience these system fractures, that experience these rights violations at the center of our thinking and find legitimate and authentic ways of including them in the process. This is work that Maitri has done in the past and it is work that we want to continue to do with the focus on social and economic rights. We need to strengthen the capacity of all kinds of leaders in this work and their ability to contribute to shaping public policy that ends poverty. We need these leaders to find each other, to find synergies and to find ways of working together and that's what today is all about.